Hello and welcome back to the BMB Show. I'm Andy Blaylock. And I'm Kevin B. Saul. And I have Bowser in front of me today. Yes, because that's current mood. Bowser. That's Kevin's current mood. Actually, we should switch this because this is not my... Kirby's always happy. Kirby. I should do the Michael Phelps face. Kirby's I should show you it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's pretty good, actually. How you doing, Kevin? Great. Grand. Wonderful. I appreciate you. Fine and dandy like cotton candy. Made in the shade, drinking pink lemonade. How are you? I'm wonderful. Because I'm here with you. you. Oh, oh wow, that's wow. so sweet. And we're glad to have you too. You know, I like Kirby because I mean, look at him. He's like perpetually happy. That's right. You know, he's a blessing. And speaking of a blessing, we're gonna get right into it. Yeah, well, this is this uh, is this new. is a B first. Yes, we're getting right we're into getting the old, lesson. We're getting tired. And we're getting hungry. I know why. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we can't go off the beaten path. Kirby is always happy because he's always eating. Oh, uh, oh! I didn't think about that. That's why I'm always happy. <laughs> be like Kirby. <laughs> always be eating. Always be eating. Oh, a a snacks. B. That sounds like another merch thing. You know, we promised them merch. We really need. Yeah. That. Well, we are waiting. I, I did contact somebody about a design, but that particular person's like busy. So yes, we'll get it's there. All, it's all good. We'll get there. It's they're, coming. They're, they're, uh, we're losing, you know, viewers and subscribers. So we, we yeah. promise something. So just like always, we thought we were going to get right into it, but then and then we, we didn't. Let's yeah. do it anyway. Took do you like, our do you like my new? Do you like my new water bottle? Your new tumbler. I, I'm going with old school today. Ooh, yes. yeah. But see, the difference is this one has a straw, and then when you do this. Mm, Tastes like metal. Oh, yeah. It's really, great. Really no. good on the fillings there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm radioactive now. Uh, yeah. This one it sounds like you, you know, bones. Ah. <laughs> I wonder if they picked that up. They probably heard that. Oh, oh yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, let me see. Ah, <laughs> yeah. You can do this. <laughs> That's oh, what I do. Oh, I hope it didn't. Someone's like driving. They just got in an accident <laughs> or something. Sorry about that. So what are we talking anyway, about today? You're the glad? The water bottle actually is important. No, Why? See, when I, when I see this water bottle... Uh, what do you call it? water can water hydro, hydro flask hydro fl whatever when i see this this reminds me of someone that i love very dearly in the lord and uh they're a great encouragement mm -hmm. they left me up and it made me think of this first i've been thinking about this all week actually but um in philippians chapter one you know paul writing his letters as he always does yeah. many times in jail yeah you know <laughs> which which i think that's important yeah. I think people forget that. Like, yeah. where is he writing this? He's not chilling out, maxing out, shooting some b-ball. No, <laughs> like what we're doing, you know, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and he said in, in verse 3, um, he said, Greetings, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 3, he said something that just really pressed upon my heart. It says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And Brother Kevin's going to go more into it. Because if that was enough, that's such a sweet sentiment. But yeah. that's just the beginning. But there are some people, like how this water bottle reminds me of, of someone. Um, there are people in our life that it's a beautiful thing to think about. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. When mm -hmm. this person comes into your mind, yeah, uh, it both lifts you up, mm -hmm. it fills you with gratitude, and it fills you, this is important, it fills you with gratitude to God. Mm -hmm. Because if you have good people in your life, if you have good friends, if you have family, loved ones that you care for very deeply... It's something to be thankful about. Yeah. But it's not just gratitude, because notice that Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. But he's not praying this to God. This is a letter. Right. So he's writing this mm -hmm. to them. So today, what we really want to talk about, and we might do a, a, like a little mini-series on this, yeah. is about communication. And that can mean a million things. Yes. Oh, by the way, Rick <laughs> said, like, you know, people said that sarcasm is the lowest form of communication. Right. And he says that communication is the highest form of sarcasm. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> That's, That's Rick for you. That's Rick for you. Love you, brother. Um, but when it comes to communication, there's communication to evangelize. Mm -hmm. There's communication to encourage. There's communication to share people what you believe. On and yeah. on it goes, right? But what we're talking about today specifically is communication to show your love to others. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we're supposed to love God. We're supposed to praise God. We're supposed to thank God. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we forget that we're supposed to communicate our love to other people. Right. And there's a lot of hard people that be like, well, you know, if I tell you I love you, I mean it. And if anything changes, I'll let you know in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, whatever. <laughs> I find that funny. I actually, I think that's, that's kind mm -hmm. of sweet in a way. If something changes, I'll let you know. But God wants us to communicate our love and our gratitude 
to him. Right. And he wants us to do that with each other. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like to say, like, I love you, Mm -hmm. or I'm thankful for you, or I'm praying for you, but people need to hear it. So much so that God inspired Paul to tell these people that I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, just like the person with this water bottle that reminds me of whenever I think of this person, I literally look up and I thank God for them. But you Mm -hmm. know what? I don't just tell God. I tell them mm-hmm. that, hey, I'm thankful for you. I love you and I'm praying yeah. for you. I think that's important. Anyway, Brother Kevin. I, I love Philippians chapter 1, and he goes on for several verses about the people of the church at Philippi here. Yeah. And he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Well, who is he remembering? Well, if you go back to Acts chapter 16, mm-hmm. he, he's remembering Lydia of Thyatira, the seller of purple, who she opened her heart. She heard the things that they were talking about. She opened her house uh, to Paul and Silas there to stay. And we're, we're talking about the Roman jailer mm-hmm. and perhaps the, the lady of the spirit of divination. So that when he's remembering these people, um, he's thanking God for them. And not just them, those are the at least people that we know about, you, you know, the Roman jailer and his house. Um, but how, does it can be, how can he be thankful for those people? Well, he goes on the next verse. And every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. You know, we have a lot in common, and we can be thankful for each other because of the gospel. Yeah. You know, the gospel is a great common denominator. There is a lot of people that more than likely, uh, almost of a surety, that I would never have talked to, never have really been friends with, never have cut up with. You know, I mean, I'll be <laughs> <Andy's> honest. Andy's weird. <laughs> Andy, brother Andy, is somebody that, you know, was different than I was growing up. I was yeah. a public school kid. He was a homeschool, and I didn't understand all of that. But you know what the gospel does? It brings people, unlikely people, together that you would really never come across. Yeah. You'd never be with them. And you can be thankful for the fellowship of the gospel. When you look around church, when you look around Sunday school, when you look around the youth activity, yeah. you can be thankful because all of these people that you're running with and that you're hanging around, you can be thankful for them because of what Jesus has done in both of your lives. Yes, amen. And the gospel has that power. And it's brought me across the paths of so many people that I would never talk to normally, but because of Christ. Yes. And so that's one reason. And this is kind of just off the top of my head. We love to prepare here on the B&B show. <laughs> this is kind of off the top of my head, though. I, I, there's people I've never run into but for the gospel. So Paul says, yeah. I can be thankful for you because of our fellowship in the gospel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, what, a, what a great blessing that is to me. It's, it's wonderful, too, because not only is it people that you... You never would have met, right? right? But it's people that you get to see grow in the Lord as you grow in the Lord, because he says in verse 6, being confident in this very thing, that he that which has begun a good work in you mm-hmm. will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. That mm-hmm. he is not a mystery. He's talking about God. Yeah. And when we get saved, the work begins. It doesn't end. Like, oh, right. you're saved now, we're good. It's like, it's no, exactly no. right. Yeah. It just, it's the beginning of a journey. That's right. Salvation is the starting line. Yeah. And I remember many people who have come to Beacon. Some grew up here, and then some came from other churches later in life, and they came, and you knew them either at a young age or middle age or whatever, and you just see them grow in the Lord. Yeah. You see that good work continuing, and it blesses your heart. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're all a work in progress. Right. So they may frustrate you. You definitely frustrate other people, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> We're, none of us are perfect, but it's an amazing thing that Brother Kevin and I, who would never be friends, honestly, um, he's way too cool for school. Right. He's, so, he's such a cool kid. Wah, 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 he had wah. bullet holes in his window. Yeah, and there, was right, that. there was that. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, that's a story for another day. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. He was way too cool. But also that Wrong, we got but... to, you know, we both have lost loved ones. Yeah. We both have survived college and not got suspended or, excuse me, expelled. Speak for your... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right, they're still looking for me. Uh, you know, we've we've gone through a lot together, but mm-hmm. the one thing I can constantly say, it's been an honor to see Brother Kevin grow in the Lord. Um, I, he can't say that about me, because I don't know still how Still praying growing. for Brother Andy to... Go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, to get, still praying for it to get saved. But it's it's... A wonderful blessing. Imagine how Paul must have felt. I mean, a lot of these people, they were yeah. introduced by, to Christ by Paul, and now they're running a church, and they're setting the world on fire and yeah. turning the world upside down. That's a good thing, by the way, for Christ. Yeah. For yeah. Christ. Let me, uh, yeah, let me <laughs> preface that. Not this kind of fire, you know? <laughs> but it's... It's a wonderful thing, and I don't think we... I think we do take it for granted that, that we know people in the Lord, 
that we're thankful for them, yeah. but also that they're a work in progress, mm-hmm. and that you can help along with that. With, by the way, exactly. starting at verse 3, telling them that you love them, uh-huh. telling them that you're thankful for them, but also being confident that being confident of this very thing, that you know that God is faithful, that God is true, and that you want to be a help for these people to grow and to continue that good work. You're not mm-hmm. supposed to just tell them you love them, to communicate, yeah. but also to communicate that, hey... I want to grow in the Lord with you. And he is, he, it brings, it says here, it, may, it brings him joy yeah. to think of these things. So I, I, I was just thinking about that, you know, the Christian life is like the turnpike, constantly <laughs> under construction. God's still working Never on ending. us. They get one thing down, and yeah. then all more lanes are closed because they're fixing another thing. Yeah. Uh, your dad mentioned in Sunday school the other day uh, how sometimes the Christian life, the things that we deal with, are, are like those. Those uh, candles that you blow out and then they light up again. Oh yeah, yep. And God's still yep. working on them, but you have a, an opportunity and courage to let it be known that hey, we're grateful for each other, and, and know that God is working on us. Too many times, this is just a, a by way of application. You know, we want you to get some application here today. Too many times, we're so quick to jet out what's wrong. Yeah, you know that you. We it's so easy. Listen to me. Look yep. at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. You look at me. It is so easy to pick out the shortcomings of other people. Oh, yes. Just the other day, somebody said something to me, and it was just kind of discouraging. Mm-hmm. And here we are trying to work for the Lord, and they're kind of throwing water on the fire. And yeah. listen, I realize I'm not perfect. Yeah. It can't be Andy, you know. He's a... Almost close, but not Man quite. of sugar in a world of ants, right? <laughs> um, but what you say... It, it, you know, you can greatly encourage people by what you say and greatly discourage people by what you say. Yeah. Uh, but go on, on, on to the next verse. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, Even as it is me for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Listen, that's an important statement there. Mm-hmm. I have you in my heart. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, what is in your heart? Um, Paul had these these believers in his heart, and he goes on to say, even as it is meet for me to think this of y'all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds, yep. and in the defense of confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Andy, brother Andy mentioned it just a second ago. We've been through things together. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, we experienced college together. We experienced losing loved ones in our lives, and. Um, it's another reason we can be thankful for each other because of the things that we go through together. Paul goes on to say later in this chapter that I would that you should understand, brother, that the things which happened to me have fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Mm-hmm. He says we're all into this together. You know, the, the celebrities get up on TV. Oh, yeah. And they, they're talking about the, you know, the Rona. We're yeah. all in this together. One celebrity said that her mansion was like a, a prison. I was like, excuse me? I had eggs Benedict with no hollandaise. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, we're not in that all together. No. But the gospel, no. the, this Christian life, we are in it all together. Yeah. And so what we're trying to get across to you today, you say, what am I learning today besides Brother Andy loves his new hydro flask and the person that gave it to him? But we want you to express that you're thankful for somebody and, you know, tell somebody, hey, I'm glad you're here. That goes a long way to encourage the believer. You know, one of the things we're supposed to do is edify each other. Yes. Build up each other. We kind of forget that, don't we? Yeah. You know, we're a hammer. You know, we're Mjolnir. Yeah. You know, (laughs) yeah. hammers are built, are used for building things, but so many times they're used for tearing things down. You you know, there's this thing that they call the love languages, you Mm -hmm. know, and mine, of course, is is, mine. (laughs) So that would be under gifts. I guess it'd be food. Like, (laughs) I know you love me if you feed me. You're a dog, basically. (laughs) Yep. My tail's wagging. (laughs) If he was a a cat, I know you love me if you leave me alone. (laughs) That's Rick. (laughs) He's a cat. Exactly. (laughs) Oh. They say the difference is a dog says, you feed me, you take care of me, you love me, you must be God. Mm -hmm. The cat goes, you feed me, you love me, you take care of me, you serve me. I must be God. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Are you a dog or a cat? No, anyway, um, I, that completely destroyed my, my thinking. No. Yeah. <laughs> B&B show, baby. No, honestly, it, it's when it comes to love languages, everyone's different. Some is time. Some is uh, gifts. Where are all of them? I don't even know. Some is like... Touch, uh, time, gifts, uh, words of, of affirmation. Yes. I mean, I've got my computer hooked up to the internet. I we could, could look do it up. that. Yeah, this I just this is the more ad lib part. I like it. Yes. No, but you guys know what I'm talking about. But here's specific. Some people, their love language is words, words of mm-hmm. affirmation. But here's the thing. Some people 
It's not words. Yeah. They think, well, talk is cheap. Action. I don't care. I want actions. I want yeah. you to prove it. And that's that's all good. We're supposed to be doers of the word. You know, mm -hmm. not just, you know. But words of affirmation are important. Whether that is your love language or not, mm -hmm. God demands and expects you to speak words of prayer, of thanksgiving, yeah. of gratitude to him. And he expects that with each other. A house cannot be built up unless you use your words. How is the gospel spread? Mm -hmm. It's not by feelings. It's not even by actions. It's about how can they hear without a preacher. I'm communicating the gospel, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You're going to stare at someone across the aisle and just be like, you know, really, really <laughs> focused on I just got a headache, that's all. <laughs> what did the people of Israel say? They marveled at the gracious words yeah. which he spoke unto them. Mm -hmm. um, words change people's lives. I did a sermon on that a little while ago, and we underestimate how important it is that you communicate your love and your thanksgiving mm -hmm. to other people. Paul was writing a letter to be read in front of all of these people because he thought it was important while he was in a jail cell awaiting execution, basically, yeah. that he wanted them to know that I love you and I thank God every time I think about you. That's mm -hmm. amazing. And all these wonderful things that Brother Kevin went over. And to remember, too, that I think the only reason he could say verse 3 is if he remembers verse 6, is that he that had begun a good work, that we're all yeah. a work in progress, yep. we're not, none of us are perfect, and like you said, if you're just looking for flaws all the time... You'll find them. <laughs> you'll find it. It's very easy, but just recognize in your life the people who have made an impact on you, the people who have been an influence on you, mm -hmm. and tell them you love them. Yeah. Encourage them. You think that people walk around generally happy, generally content, generally um, encouraged, but mm -hmm. a lot of times they're not. And you just assume, well, people probably tell them they love them all the time, they lift them up. No, mm -hmm. no. No one tells Kevin they love him. Yeah. Never. I don't even tell him. No, I I'm know. just kidding. <laughs> I do. I love you, Kevin. Well, anyway. you know, speaking of which, you know, I know many of you of the 19 that watch the B&B show. <laughs> and I can you. honestly say, you know, I, I love you guys, most yeah. of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, what a blessing to be in fellowship of the gospel. Yeah. You, you know? Looking back, I mean, yeah, I mean, we were neighbors, but we were worlds apart, honestly. Yeah. And we could go into all that sometime. And some of the people we had at youth conference are, you know, <laughs> like, where did you dig up? <laughs> That's that exactly right. But anyway, yeah, just, just, just use, use your words. Use your words and be nice and, and, Express gratitude for somebody. You know, maybe you have a tell them. Don't to, tell uh, the Lord. Uh, yeah. Tell him first. I'm yes, thankful but... for that person. You know, I just this this morning it was interesting to me. I dealt with a little discouragement. It was me. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was not I'm gonna I didn't no, get him no. a water bottle. But um I was reading the word this morning and the Lord lifted me up with his word. <laughs> it was you know, yeah. it's like the Lord knows I know what you're going through. Yeah. And that's off the topic, but he used his word to comfort and help me and lift me up. Um, so go and do that likewise, yes. all right? I'll say one last thing before we go. We got time. Why not? We're all here. We're all together. Yeah. I want you to remember something. Um, when Jesus Christ rose again, okay, mm -hmm. I've had someone who was dying of cancer and said, you know, am I supposed to go like on the... I have very limited time left on earth. Am right. I supposed to go on the mission field? Mm -hmm. Um, am I supposed to do this great thing for God? Am I supposed to like travel the country? Am I supposed to like go to all the people I've wronged and I don't know? You know am, I, am I supposed to go on some apology tour? What am mm -hmm. I supposed to do? And I said, Well, what did Jesus do? Think about this. When he rose again, he could have went up to Pontius Pilate and went like, Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or the Sanhedrin. That's what we would have done. Mm -hmm. Like, can't touch us. You know, Duh. told you. Yeah. Um, he could have done a lot of self-satisfying things. Right? Yeah. Um, he could have gone to the. He could have gone to Rome. He could have ascended to Rome and proclaim he's God, and mm -hmm. you know. But what did he do? He decided to appear to his friends, right, and his family, the so, people who were discouraged, yeah, the people who were downcast. He spent the last few days he had left on earth before he ascended to his father to go around and tell people that mm -hmm. he loved them. I mean, imagine Peter. Peter was a broken man. That's right. The disciples and Peter. And Peter. Yeah. I go fishing. He was a broken man. And Jesus decided the most important thing on earth to do is go to a brother that he loved mm -hmm. and ask him, Peter, do you love me? Thou knowest I love you. He forgave him. He restored him. That's good stuff. He blessed him. So, word. If it means that much to Jesus Christ, when only a few days left on earth, that's what we should be doing. Absolutely. So, anyway. get after it. Get yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Get your face in the book. Amen. And we hope you have a wonderful day. And always remember, always be eating.
And always remember, I can't throw this at the camera because it'll break. <laughs> Jeff has already day. broke two camera stands, he said. But that wasn't because of us. That's right. How I like peaches. <laughs> Mr. Glue. <laughs> yeah. Good day. <laughs>